Good morning, friends. My name is Bernardo Zapata, and I serve as an associate pastor for multi-ethnic ministries at Barlet United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are joining us for this service of worship and praising to God. Here at Barlet, we have a mission, and our mission is to know God and to make God known to all through worship, education, and service in our community and throughout the world. Let us prepare for worship, and thank you for being here with us. Let us join together in our call to worship, and you will find congregational responses in the bold print. Put aside distractions and this world's many gods. Stand in awe of God's love, and prepare to worship in sincerity and faithfulness. We will serve God in Christ. God's voice we will trust and obey that all may come to know our Lord. Celebrate the good news this day, so that others may set their hope on the living God. We will not hide our thanks and praise, but will tell of the glorious deeds of the Lord and all the wonders God has done. Let's pray. Precious God, creator and sustainer of all, we gather in your presence today, in this sacred space, as one body, to praise you and to worship you. As this year goes by, we realize how many unknowns we have gone through, how much uncertainty has surrounded us, 
how many difficulties we are facing even today. We lift all those communal concerns to you and ask you, Lord, to help us to remain faithful and ask you, Lord, to even in the midst in these turbulent times to guide us. Lord, keep us safe and keep us as one. We also have many personal and individual prayers to lift up to you, to you, gracious God, and we recognize it. So we ask you to bring peace to the hearts of those who suffer, to those who are lo have lost their loved ones, to those who are sick, either physically, emotionally, or spiritually, Lord. Lord, our nation, our nation as a whole is hurting, and, because of, and it is because of political divisiveness, social injustice, racial tensions, turmoil, and violence. Lord, we have no control over, over the situations, but we know that you can give the leaders of this city, the leaders of this state, and the leaders of this country, the pause and wisdom to lead us through these unknown times and to pay peacefully resolve conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we all come together to pray that prayer that was taught to us by Jesus Christ himself, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. This morning we have another lesser known Dr. Seuss book, and it is The Butter Battle Book. I chose this book specifically for today, as this week we celebrate Veterans Day and honor those who have served in our military with the goal of maintaining peace in our country and throughout the world. The Butter Battle Book, try saying that five times fast, is a cautionary tale of how divided we can become if we fail to remember that we are called by God to be his peacemakers. The story is about the Yooks and the Zooks. The Yooks firmly believe that bread should only be eaten butter side up, while the Zooks believe just as strongly that you should only eat your bread butter side down. They allow the subject of buttered bread to divide them, growing deeper and deeper into animosity and violent acts until finally they stand face to face, ready to drop a bitsy big boy boomeroo to completely wipe out the other, even if it means destroying themselves. Tune in later this week to see just what happens in the book. I would like to call our attention back to the Beatitudes, which were the topic of the sermon last week, specifically Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, which said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. There are so many things in life that try to divide us. So many times where history shows us where countries or even the world has been at war. And I often think no one actually wins in a war. There is much lost on both sides. God does not want us to make war. He calls us to live in the way of Jesus. He calls us to make peace. As disciples, we're called to look for peaceful solutions to conflict, which will most likely test us to our very core. You see, if we listen and really make space to hear what others are saying, we create opportunities to solve conflict 
peacefully. We just have to be willing to try to listen and search out those opportunities to hear something, even if it's not what we believe or agree with. This week, I would like to challenge each of us to search out chances to peacefully resolve conflict from what we're having for dinner in our house to friendship issues and even sibling squabbles. Let's show that we are true disciples of the Prince of Peace. Will you all pray with me this morning, please? Peaceful and loving God, through Jesus, you showed us that love is the greatest power. Help us to truly love our neighbors by always seeking to make peace whenever we are challenged by conflict. Give us the strength to walk away from fighting and lean into talking about our differences and peaceful resolution. God, please be with those here today in body or in spirit, reminding them that peace can always be found in you. We pray all of these things in your son's most precious name. Amen. With hearts full of thanksgiving and praise, let us now turn to God in our prayer of thanks. If you will pray with me. Most gracious and loving God, we do give thanks for your love. And we give thanks for your church. And we give thanks for being in ministry and mission to all your people. As we share your love in our church, our community, the nation, and the world. We give thanks for our nation this day, dear Lord, and for our leaders and for the strength that comes through the diversity and various gifts of our nation's people. We give thanks for the blessings bestowed upon this country and pray that we will continue to be a light of hope among our people and to the world. And this day, dear Lord, we are especially grateful for our veterans who have served on the front lines ensuring and sacrificing so much be sure that we can have those freedoms. So we give thanks for them this day. As we seek to serve you, dear Lord, and as we serve others through your love, we pray that you will use us according to your will, that you will take all that we are, all the gifts that we have to offer, that you will multiply them and use them for the work of your church and the advancement of your kingdom. And we pray all of these things in your Son's most holy name. Amen.
Our scripture reading for today comes from the uh, book of James, chapter 2, chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. This is what the word says. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sortiness, a rank road of wickedness, and welcome with witness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the world, and do not be merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they are like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law only of liberty, and persevere being not healers, healers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think that they are religious and not brittle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unsustained by the world. This is the word of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God. Perhaps the vast majority of you do not know this, but I am a civil engineer by training. I had to navigate and learn a myriad of different theories before receiving my engineering degree. At the end of my studies, I pretty much was a walking specimen full of tons of theoretical knowledge but with not so much practical experience. I guess most of us here have felt that way at one point in their lives. Not, not, longer, not long after graduating from college, I got this phone call from a relative of mine who was in the early stages of designing his dream home. This is sprawling, magnificent home in the outskirts of the city where he and his family lived. He told me that he wanted me to do the structural design for his house. Up to that point in my professional career, my work experience had been mostly as a field engineer in the construction and maintenance of highways. So being asked to design something in a different, completely different field of expertise made me feel uneasy and somehow unprepared. I took the challenge anyway and headed to the city where my relative lived. Remember, this was way before the internet and even email existed. So I look over the architectural drawings of the home and almost immediately I entered in a panic mode. I realized that all the theoretical training about structural design I had received was a completely different animal to the actual application in real life of those abstract concepts. I found myself facing this challenging task of designing an earthquake-proof concrete structure that needed to be able to withstand the seismic geological nature of my home country applying my own most inexistent experience. I was confronted by this gigantic challenge, but I also came to the realization that it was given to me by my cousin out of trust and confidence in my ability to put into practice what I was taught and what I been trained for. Theory and practice, filling the big gap between these two dissimilar realities is challenging and also may simultaneously be frightening and rewarding. 
it occurs to me that somehow we can draw a parallel between the story that I just told you and the reading for today from the book of James. Today's text confronts the listener and tells us to put in practice what we have heard. James challenges us, followers of Christ, to not only listen intently to the word, but also to put in practice each and every one of the invitations and commands which God self and Jesus Christ instructed the people to abide to. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, reads the, test, the text. Simply listening and ruminating the word with no positive action leads to deception, says James. Instead, to avoid such a to avoid, avoid such a pitfall, do what it says. But it's not only, not only James who admonishes the followers of Christ elsewhere in the Bible, we find countless instances in which the believers are constantly reminded to act according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans strongly questions the deceiving practices and witness of the believers. Why do you judge your brothers? Why do you look down on your brother? Accept others without passing, passing judgment. Instead, instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. In other words, we should rather build that our neighbor. Friends, judging others by using our abstract standards instead of applying ourselves to practice the word, leads, leads us to deception and rivalry. We live today in an era in which our behaviors, our minds, have become hostages of antisocial behavior promoted by social media in reality shows. We live in an era in which in order to be accepted, to have, we have to take sides and despise our neighbors to think differently. We live in an era in which racism, misogyny, homophobia, classism, hatred, false supremacy, and using our faith as a weapon have become our everyday prayer. We as society are in the brink of self-destruction and close to destroy God's creation because of greediness and now our selfish desires to throw a mantle of darkness on the promise of abundant life found in the application of God's word. We have got it wrong. To paraphrase Pastor Jason's sermon a couple of weeks ago, if we as Christians do not follow the task of teaching, to task the teaching of Christ, we get it wrong. We get it wrong, we, we become mere reciters of the word instead of faithful doers. We get it wrong when we listen to the wisdom of below from the world rather than to the wisdom, wisdom from above, from God. We get it wrong with, when we oversimplify the profoundness of God's grace and mercy and rather treat such grace as a cheap commodity. Yes, friends, we get it totally wrong when we try to live by two completely opposite measures simultaneously. Friends, the wisdom of this world has led us to believe that we can serve God. Friends, we deceive ourselves when we forget that in the face that the face in the mirror has been created by the, in the image of God. We deceive ourselves when we interpret the word of God as an abstract canvas and reduce God to a simple theoretical concept. But there is hope, friends. There is always hope. And that hope comes from the Word. I want to invite you today, I want to challenge you, if you will, to take James' Word home with you and to meditate and rest with this Word. Am I a mere healer that bears no fruit? Or on the contrary, am I a witness of the Spirit of God who resides in me and gives me assurance that I am a doer of the world? 
Friends, what I am suggesting here are not simple rhetorical questions. These are questions that may lead you, me, and others to humbly accept our weakness and to recon our failures. These nerve-wracking, unsettling, and device, divisive times open up the opportunity for the good news to be proclaimed in the world, in word and in deed. This is the time for the word of grace and hope that God has instilled in us to bear fruit. It is the time for us to intently hear the cry of the oppressed. It is the time to reveal God, the giver of the perfect gift that lives in us to the world. This is the time for the gifts of mercy and compassion to be presented to our brothers and sisters here and elsewhere. Now is the time for the perfect law of liberty, the law of love of God and love of neighbor to become, to become a tangible, concrete reality, not a paltry theoretical concept. Now is the time to reaffirm that human life is covenantal. It is the time to set aside our moral and religious dualism. Now is the time for the promise to be fulfilled, that the meek will inherit the earth, for the promise that the hungry and thirsty for righteousness will receive plenty. It is the time for the merciful to be shown mercy, and for the pure of heart to see God. It is the time for the peacemakers to be called children of God. My call for you today, brothers and sisters, is that we need to become better and doers of the good news of solidarity, mercy, justice, justice, and compassion for all. We are confronted by this gigantic challenge given to us by our Lord out of trust, love, and confidence in our willingness to put in practice with loving hearts what we have been taught. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where, is, where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in given that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. It's found on page 884 of our hymnal, and you will see it on the bottom of your screen. This is what it says. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule for both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in, in the family of God, where all are brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in life everlasting. Amen.
receive these words of benediction. El Señor les bendiga y les guarde. El Señor muestre su rostro hasta ustedes y les conceda la paz. El Señor bendiga a sus siervos y siervas en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén.